Welcome back everybody to the ADMW2. We are looking at the last game in group C. Enti has the Siren in the lower right and 65 cards. Sharkbait has the Joktari Beastmaster in the upper left and 62 cards. They are about even on a number of cards there. Uh, this is a classic strict Joktari Beastmaster opening for shark bait, move to layer, and then cast an enchantment. Usually a Hawkeye. Um, looks like Enti is going with Naya and a Mana Flower. The Siren. Enti is currently sitting at 3 0. He has won three games and lost none. This is the last game he is playing. Shark bait is at one and two so he really needs this to win he needs to win this to advance nt is sitting pretty he does not need this to win he does not need to win this in order to advance um so we see a quick plan from nt he has no worries about what's happening next i guess um Shark bait, taking his time here. Um, Joktari can put on a lot of pressure early. Uh, you have to be ready for that Timberwolf in your face or whatever it is, Falcon in your face on the second turn, third turn, if they don't rouse the beast. And uh, we'll see how Enti deals with this. Uh, right now, having three spells to prepare is pretty good. I wouldn't expect Naya to last very long here. Um, I think generally Sharkbait uh, casts a uh, Kajara and then moves up and hits something on the second turn. So we'll see if that happens this time or if he takes it a little slower. We've got no, quick change here from NT. Yeah, we've seen a lot of not winning from the Siren this tournament. And, uh, you know, people are trying all sorts of different things, trying to see if it works. And uh, we have not met with a whole lot of success. Now, some of those have been not using the abilities very well. Some of those have been dice games. Um... We see the Ring of Tides come out here. That is going to give plus one to die rolls for NT during his initiative and plus two to effect rolls with Hydro spells during his initiative. Let's see. Enchantment go down. Maybe a Hawkeye. Maybe some armor. Thorn Lasher come down from Sharkbait. Not really sure why we have a thorn lasher come down. It's not in a zone where it can reach anything. Um, two enchants on NT. Sharkbait choosing not to use his quick cast either. Saving up some mana for something, I guess. Sharkbait at 9 mana and NT at 16 mana. See, the Falcon is ready to strike something. I wonder if we're going to see a lesser teleport on this uh, Thorn Lasher, or if it's just protection against an advancing something or other. Um, yeah. After that really aggressive opening, we see Sharkbait kind of back off and cast a couple, I guess one more thing, not even a couple more things. It may have given Enti the time he needs to be ready for this Falcon attack. And then we'll see. Still don't know what those enchantments are. I would guess that they're armor or Hawkeyes. There might be two Hawkeyes on the field right now. Uh, that would make sense. we got Darkfen Ask coming out from the lair. I don't know how effective that's going to be. We see an enchantment go down on the Jaktari Beastmaster.
Interesting. Falcon runs in to attack Naya, like usual, like I would have expected. Get those actions out of there so that you can win the creature game. Populating dice rolls. I should note that this is a pre-recorded game. I do know what the outcome is. Um, and I will be doing my best to point out what's going on here. We see a less than average roll for shark bait there. Not by much within common variance. Two damage on Naya. Oftentimes the siren will place a shallow sea down to protect the stuff. It does give you a sort of aegis uh, against melee attacks. Certainly against falcons it would help because it reduces it to two dice. Let's see what Enti's going to do here. He's going to cast another enchantment on Jaktari Beastmaster. Now this looks very similar to the Adramalic Warlock game he played against Devil's Vendetta just a minute ago. Or, I mean, a minute ago. Like, the last game he played for the tournament was against Devil's Vendetta with an Adramalic Warlock that just did 32 damage with curses. And we do see a Chains of Agony coming down here. And we do see a Mage Bane coming down here. So we are seeing a damage over time Siren build here. Let's see what else goes on. Sharkbait already taking two damage, has two curses on him. Now would be a good time to remove those. Especially if you had a Mage Wand. You do want to kill Naya though, because she can cast that Dissolve. Sharkbait should be able to stay away in order to not get more curses, or at least draw the Siren into uh, more creature death. Neither character sporting armor right now. Shark bait at 14 mana, NT at 17 mana. So now I had to have cast a water spell. I'm guessing that's going to be a rust then, just in case there's armor. Although I don't know why you would need a rust against those two types of damage. Maybe there's some attack spell prep or some thorn push prep or something going on here. Sharkbait has yet to attack with his Jaktari Beastmaster, not using that archery skill. The Naya will gain the Wounded Prey, I'm sure, um, pretty soon here, and get more damage, knock it out. Wonder if Enti is saving mana to cast a big creature like a Water Elemental or something. Or if he's just going to keep cursing the living daylights out of things. It should also be noted that the Siren does have Siren's Call and can prevent a creature from attacking her each turn by using an action. Since uh, does not, I do not believe Shark Bait will be using um, any non-living animals, since I don't believe there exist any. Chains of Agony, an excellent curse to put on a Jaktari Beastmaster because of that innate fast trait. And of course, Mage Bane always pays for itself. So we're seeing some efficient damage come out here for Enti. No damage yet from Shark, just two on Naya there. We'll see if he manages to 
take a little damage here or give a little damage before taking a little more damage All right, we see another Falcon come out for shark bait. I believe Falcons are a good choice against the Siren, um, mostly because um, the water spells oftentimes will not be able to hit flying creatures. So you have maneuverability and you don't get hit by some of the uh, cheap attack spells that the Siren would otherwise be throwing at your creatures. Enchanter's Wardstone come down, definitely focusing on those enchantments here. We will see how that influences Shark's decisions here. If he's going to remove those curses uh, and pay the extra, or he's going to try and kill that Wordstone before he removes curses. See another enchantment go down on Shark Bait from Naya. So, what other enchantments are there that are water enchantments? Does he have Drown on there? That would get expensive. Sharkbait rolling four dice because of Wounded Prey. Mage Bane, Chains of Agony being viewed again. NT going to wait it out here. Shark bait moving in to get some piddly amounts of damage here, hopefully. We got one. No weak. And there's a rhino hide, so the siren has armor on. Remains to be seen if shark bait has armor on, since he has not actually taken an attack yet. Anti passing again, as I oftentimes say, passing until you absolutely have to move is a very good idea. Evarium Longbow coming out. That's going to be... Oh, and the Hawkeye. So we got six dice here. Doing only five damage. Not quite enough to kill. Average would have killed. So Nia only has 11 health, I believe. Yep, 11 health there. Siren moving forward. Is this going to be another curse? It is a swell. So he is doing some water attacks on his initiative, which is a 5 up push and 4 dice on the attack. Should be 4 dice on the attack. Getting four damage and a push. I think they figure out eventually that the uh, um, initiative is bugged. One extra damage from the bash. And now the Lasher is in range to hit the Siren. Don't know if he wants the Siren. Oh, wow. Five damage on a three dice Lasher. That is incredibly good. Five critical damage against the Rhino Hide there. And that will be the end of the round. Let's see if they figure out that uh, extra die problem. I think this is here. This is where it goes.
no extra damage. Alright, that'll be the end of the round. Now, those falcons are poised to go and attack that ward stone, which might be really good for shark bait. And there is a drown on shark bait. Wow. So he is going to pay some significant upkeep on that one. Gets a suffocate marker on drown. The suffocate markers affect the thing that drown is attached to. Um, so you get minus two life from a suffocate marker. As soon as Drown is dispelled, however, uh, the, all of the Suffocate tokens are gone with it. So it is good at killing small things, but very expensive to kill large things. Not so sure I would have played Drown in this instance. Perhaps a Ghoul Rot would have been better. Drown is better in the short term because it doesn't cost 8 mana. It'll only cost him like 4, let's see, 2 to cast, 1 to reveal, 1 for upkeep, and then 2 for upkeep. So you're looking at 6 mana to get 4 damage, whereas with Ghoul Rot you can get lots more damage for 8 mana. So I think Drown is much more efficient when trying to kill a small creature such as that snake or even a falcon. Falcon would be fine for drown I think if it can target it. I don't remember if it can target a non-flying or a flying creature. Alright still got that wardstone problem now he's got three enchantments on him that he does not want to have on him possibly a rust as well is what I'm guessing. And it looks like the... I'm guessing that's a Brace Herself on Sharkbait right now. That is not revealed. And then a Rust from NT. He is going to put a spell on Naya. That is a little crazy. I would have guessed that Naya would not get to act this turn. So whatever that is, he probably doesn't need it. I'm guessing that Sharkbait is going to try and kill Naya with the snake. And kills Naya with the snake, then his falcons are free to go hit that ward stone. And he would be free to shoot the uh, siren, which would not be a bad move. Especially if he could get away from the wall. Uh, he does not want to be pushed during the first quick cast next time. NT saying he understands the Lasher. I still don't understand the Lasher, so somebody in the comments can elucidate me on the Lasher. My best guess is to keep whatever the target is in range of the bow. Or to keep them from closing with the Jaktari Beastmaster. It did roll a lot of crits. Still has two armor to get through with the Siren. Six dice should still do a decent amount of damage. And the Siren only can, can only take about five of those shots before she's gone. Because the bow does have inerrant piercing one. 
it might be worth trying to damage race this siren right now. The siren's call might mess with that math though, so we'll see what shark decides to do. If he is going to go for the ward stone, he should move the falcon that's on the lair first so that the other falcon does not get um, sirens called away from the ward stone. Right, Shark is choosing not to deploy from the lair this turn. Perhaps saving mana up for a purge or something like that. We see a surging wave come from the siren. Surging wave rolls three attack dice. Getting two damage in. Kiro's favor, he is going to re-roll the damage. Brace yourself being revealed on Shark Bait. Which is fine, he's going to take a wall bash after this anyway. Alright, brace yourself soaking two damage instead of just one. But shark bait ultimately taking two damage. Then a bash from this push and slam. And we see five damage coming out of that bash. And there is the rust, so Sharkbait is going to take three of that damage, two crit, and one overflow from the normal damage. And now he is slammed, so he will not be able to fire that bow with any sort of reliability. He could take the seven up, day's chance, and try and shoot the siren down. Sharkbait taking major damage, Tangle Vining the Siren, and looks like moving away and casting something on himself. And that means that Naya is going to get a chance to go before being attacked. I would definitely act with Naya now if you have a desire to use that spell. Wow, what is he doing? Oh, just attacking. Okay. Okay. Let's see if the snake manages to get any damage out on Naya. Oh, yep, two dice because of the wounded prey. That's good. All right. Oh, it looks like Naya had a dissolve. Interesting. Dissolve for a wand, maybe? All right, if he's going to attack the ward stone, I think he should use the falcon that's in the uh, lair zone. Getting zero damage on the ward stone. Four armor gets absorbed, uh, four damage gets absorbed by the armor. And there is the siren's call on the falcon, causing the falcon to not only not be able to attack the ward stone, but also not be able to attack the siren. So Sharkbait is going to move back and forth because Siren's Call means that you have to move one square closer, and if you have done that, then you may do something else. 
Thorn Lasher rolling significantly less than last time to balance it all out. And that will be the end of the round. Naya is dead. Sharkbait is at 17 damage out of 34. And Enti is Tanglebind. Sharkbait now able to use the Avarium Longbow to shoot the Wardstone if he needs to. And we see the regrowth get revealed. Enti choosing to pay the upkeep for Drown, so now we see uh, Sharkbait is basically at 30 life because of the two Drown tokens. And um, 15 damage because of the regrowth. Still at half health. Enti not in a whole lot of danger. Uh, two armor is pretty good against uh, three dice attacks. Love to see an acid ball or a rust get thrown at the siren, but Sharkbait does have a few enchantments to deal with that might cause some trouble. So it is now Enti's initiative. So any attack or any hydro attack that he uses will be enhanced. I could definitely see a spear come out and a dead falcon um, or a teleport and another surging wave on the Beastmaster. Um, yeah, we'll see what Enti chooses to do here. It does seem like he is focusing down shark bait, so if he can keep the pressure on he might get to be able to do enough damage before Sharkbait recovers here. But it is his window of opportunity is narrowing uh, rather rapidly, especially if Sharkbait can take out this Wordstone. Um, half, half health is still half health, though. The good thing for Shark is that Enti is spending a lot of his mana in upkeep. So... He will have less and less mana by the end of the game if Shark keeps Drown on for a little bit longer. And really, the only thing that's doing damage to him right now is if he casts a spell or moves. So if he holds still and doesn't cast very many spells, his regrowth will eventually tick up and help him to be in a more safe place. Um... He has a lair to help him use his mana efficiently at getting more actions on the board. And he does have that longbow, which will give him actions to either stab at the siren if she gets free or kill that wardstone if necessary. So it's not over yet by any means. Um, every time I've thought that maybe Enti will be casting another creature, it chooses, turns out that he doesn't. So, um, I wonder if he's going to conserve mana this round. Um, maybe place a Shallow Sea and then punch the Tangle Vine or something. Um, but any delays are going to let Sharkbait have some recover time. So he might just choose to teleport out of it and keep the pressure on. Shark bait done with planning here. thinking hard about his next choice. He does have enough mana to teleport one and then cast a surging wave or a swell, but next turn he will not have the mana to do that. The 
because you'll have to pay three upkeep rather than two. I will barely have the mana to do that again next turn. Bitterwood Fox coming out. I do like the choice of fast creatures for um, Sharkbait here. It appears that there are not going to be anything, there's not going to be anything out there to hinder them. And wherever the Siren goes, he will be able to catch up with the Siren and do some damage. Looks like we see a teleport coming out, I would imagine. Yep, and then he is going to probably move out of range of that Lasher. Down makes most sense because he's out of the range of the Falcon in the upper right corner. But it does put him in the range of the snake. The snake, however, only does one damage. So, all right, he is going to get. Um, he didn't roll uh, four dice again. All right, so he even rolls less damage uh, on that one, uh, but he does get the push. And he gets three more damage. Shark bait up to 20 damage from 15. Cannot sustain this for much longer. Uh, he is at 20 out of 30 because of drown out of 28 if drown is maintained. So shark bait getting some damage in on the siren here, or at least trying. And he does one damage in a week. Uh, I don't imagine the weak is going to do much in this. Seems like Enti is just hurling attack spell after attack spell this game. The Falcon decides to go up to the top. Does get three damage on that Wardstone. And finishes the Wardstone off. Um, I, if I were shark bait, I might move to the middle. Yeah, you take two damage, but you also, um, don't get wall bashed again. I'm trying to calculate how much mana he needs to do what he's trying to do here. Uh, shark is in a dangerous space right now. Enti looking like he is in control of this game for now. Although if he loses more mana from paying that upkeep, um, we see a renewing spring go down. Interesting. So he takes his two damage. And he heals three off of the Renewing Spring. And they figured out that he needs to roll one more die for his Surging Wave. one damage. Shark bait barely holding on here. I would imagine that if Enti has a curse book he is going to be playing Poison Blood next turn. It will be Shark's initiative. I would imagine that 
the right thing to do would be to cast a heal or minor heal on yourself in the quick cast and then if you see a an enchantment go down be prepared to seeking to spell it But we'll see how Sharkbait plays this one. He really needs to recover. He needs to recover pronto. Um, remove Curse on Magebane and uh, Chains of Agony would not be a bad plan here. You also want to have a Dispel for the Drown at some point. <clears throat> you also have to think about the fact that NT will have initiative again next round, and you might take some damage. Some serious thinking here. I said we are probably going to see a poison blood from Enti this turn, and um, we may also see um, a ghoul rot or something like that. Just depends on what he thinks Shark is going to do, I think. Because uh, he is starting to spend a lot of mana on the upkeep for that drown. And uh, I don't think it's necessarily worth it right now. Shark has been hovering around 10 life remaining for a while here. Um, if that had been a ghoul rot, it would now be worth more um, than the drown. So, yeah, unfortunately drown is kind of a bad spell. Um, for this particular um, effect. I think it would be very good at getting rid of something like Falella, or um, for instance if this snake was a problem you could definitely stay away from it for a couple of turns while Drown killed it. Um, or a particular pesky falcon. Anything with low health that is dodgy and annoying. Be a good answer to Taraki or to Jade Gremlin. I do believe enchantment transfusion with drown is not something that really works uh, because as soon as drown is removed that creature has its health back um, so you might be able to pair it with um, poison blood or deathlock um, but that would be a whole lot of mana to kill one or two creatures I don't even think it works with that because of the marker itself is what gives life minus two. So if you move the marker, eh, that's all that complicated stuff that I don't like about this game. I really like the game, but the myriad different ways to have or not have or bookkeep or not bookkeep something is kind of ridiculous. 
We have a long planning phase here. Interesting that uh, Enti has made it all the way to this point in the game by virtue of attack spell and curse. Um, Naya was his only creature, the ring his only equipment, the flower his only conjuration, and everything else was enchantments and attack spells so far. And I do think there is something to the saturation model of doing things where you just have so much of one kind of thing that it just makes it difficult to deal with. I would imagine he has several rusts and perhaps a few more of Chains of Agony and Mage Bane. I'm sure he has Ghoul Rots in there somewhere. And... Uh, I'm also sure he has some more equipment, but has not yet needed it. And I have clean forgotten what the other enchantment on the siren is, other than Rhino hide. So the question arises here. Um, can he reveal poison blood in response to shark bait taking a drink from the fountain? And the answer is no. However, you may reveal something as soon as someone activates, I think. Um, so, uh, I believe there is a window there where as soon as something activates, you may um, reveal it. Um, but I don't know if activation actually counts as a step for the purposes of enchantment reveal. So, uh, at this particular juncture, we rule that uh, as soon as Shark flips his action marker, he is allowed to reveal poison blood in the same fashion as um, declaring the attack, uh, the casting of a spell. Um, I don't know if that was correct or not. Uh, I would like to think that it isn't correct, that when you activate something, you can't really interrupt that. Um, but there are certainly... Um, yeah, there are certainly counterpoints to that. So we see a tangle vine go down on the siren. And there's a poison blood that gets revealed. So instead of drinking, shark is going to move away and take another damage. Uh, at this point, he is hoping To... All right, so he is he is not going to dispel right now. Probably got a big remove curse or purge next turn. I don't know if it's going to be enough to save him. Uh, it's all going to depend on whether or not Inti has another teleport, I think. going to Sirens call the fox so that he doesn't take fox damage, which makes sense. This is an excellent way to use the Siren. Um, you have Siren's Call is what keeps you from taking damage. You need to use it. This is perfect play by Enti 
uh, using Siren's Call to prevent damage from happening. Um, he is out of range of the Falcon, so he doesn't have to worry about them. He doesn't care about the weeks, uh, and the snake only rolls one die. The fox would roll three dice. So he is preventing the most damage by Siren's calling the fox into his zone. And um, if he does have another teleport, then it will be fairly simple for him to just teleport out of range of the fox and not have to worry about it next turn. Shark choosing to get his falcons into range of the siren and uh, attacking the mana flower in the meantime. Probably not going to do enough damage to it. It's not his initial target anyway. Wow, gets four damage there. If he had gotten more than one with the first one, he definitely would have taken that out. Now that, it might actually have been worth trying to do that as well, uh, just because of all the upkeep that Enti is paying for that drown right now. It might have kept him from doing the things he wanted to do next turn. Although he does have, well, let's see, is he going to pay the, yeah, he pays the upkeep for it. Um, he would be at seven mana if that mana flower had died. Um, which would be enough for a teleport and swell, but not a teleport and a surging wave. So he would have not, he would not slam the Beastmaster. Uh, even if, if he has another teleport. Um, he needs to take his Siren's Call Marker back. Um, and Shark needs to do something about these enchantments right now. He is at minus 8 life because there are 4 counters on Drown. So he is looking at a 26 life Beastmaster that has 20 damage. Uh, only 6 remaining life is a dangerous place to be in. Especially when you have Poison Blood on you. So he needs to definitely deal with this. Um, if he can get something in the way, uh, well, no, a teleport is just going to do it anyway. Um, yeah. He can purge himself, and then he could go drink, maybe? Um, but, you know, he's going to have to... He's going to have to understand that uh, first quick cast might be his doom... Uh, in the next round. Unless he has his own surging wave um, to slam the siren during his quick cast. Shark gone for 30 seconds. I don't know why. Don't think it's ever explained. Um, as I've said before, Siren's Call should be back on the Siren's uh, stat card, just because the Fox has used its action after being Siren's Called. If it had not, if he had Siren Called it after it used its action marker, then it would in fact persist to the next round. So you may, you can Siren's Call up to two things around, assuming that they act before your mage does. Um, you could use it again. There it goes. Yeah, uh, we need to see a purge this round and a and a heal next round if Shark's gonna survive this, I think. And if he does not survive it, that will be a bummer for him because he does not get to advance if he does not win this game. And Enti will have gone 4-0 and if uh, he wins this game. And the Siren will rack up one victory for the ADMW. So, either way, it's a win for all of us spectators. We get to see cool things happen. I don't know if I agree with this Ivarium Longbow. Um... He's had to move a lot here, and uh, if he had had Kajara, he might have been able to save some damage uh, and some mana by just 
moving and attacking and gotten some extra damage out on the siren or killed something faster um, yeah I, I don't know this is slightly different than what I've seen him use his Dark Tari Beastmaster before um, so I wonder if it's an experimental book that he just didn't get enough practice with um, or if uh, Anti is just uh, reading the signs and getting things done. Uh, it is worth noting that stacking enchantments and then dropping a ward stone is really strong. Even one ward stone. Like just two turns of having that ward stone down, two or three turns of having that ward stone down, diverting attacks to it, um, making them hold off, dispelling your enchantments can get some serious damage out on people and it only costs you four mana um, definitely worth the investment there um, it, you can argue mana for mana it might not be worth the investment for mana uh, they'd have to dispel three enchantments for it to be worth the mana um, but you have to also understand that they are using actions to deal with it um, or bleeding mana so there's the purge magic that is going to get rid of all of shark spells and all of empty spells that is some significant value right there um, not as significant as it would have been if um, there had been a ghoul rod or something on there but drown is three poison blood is five mage man is five and rust is five so he spent 12 mana to get rid of 18 mana worth of enchantments uh from his opponent unfortunately he also got rid of uh nine of his own mana enchantments which is good for Enti and not so good for shark if he could have saved that regrowth that would have been nice but with a purge you can't do that into using his quick cast and there's another teleport and this could be very dangerous for shark here he's going to move away from the snake and the lasher and the falcons and surging wave all right and he gets five damage on that surging wave and he only rolled three dice he should have rolled one more Yep, there's the plus one die. And it gets another damage. That is six damage off of four dice. And they push into the wall. Can't kill him, but we'll put him within death range very easily. This is where I don't realize that the ring is a push, but it is. He got the push because a seven is, um, yeah, a seven is a push, and he rolled a five plus two, is seven, or four plus two, whatever. Eight is a push, and he rolled a six. I can read chat. All right, NT is now away from the falcon damage away from the lasher damage and away from the snake damage the fox will still hit the siren but this might be the end for shark bait he can move down and drink but i think that is not going to be enough Fox doing two damage to the siren. Get him up to ten. Shark might be able to survive this if he moves away and drinks and then walls himself in or something. Wow, one healing off of that renewing spring. That is not good. That is not enough. He's only got six health and he needs to 
wall himself out or teleport himself away or something. Flower dies. Falcon is probably going to go to where the siren is. Or close enough. Flasher is going to do nothing. And then... Yeah, Snake has been doing pretty well this game. Unfortunately, its targets have been probably not ideal. I think the Lasher got two attacks off, one of which did nothing, one of which crit for five. So, a two attack Lasher and a, a multi attack snake. The Falcons have not done a ton. They killed a Wardstone. They ended up ganging up on Naya, but um, they have not been able to get any damage on that mage. The Fox has done a little bit of damage to the mage, but this is the point at which. Shark just needs to hope that Enti's next roll does not work. So... He's got to keep Enti from attacking him somehow. And then he's got to recover. If he can double wall here... Enti is hindered by the fox uh, and will not be able to move down two. It might take enough damage that it becomes dangerous um, and give Sark a chance to heal. Double wall is unfortunately going to take all of his mana. Uh, I, I mean, assuming wall of thorns. Um... But then he can use his action to drink. And if Enti does choose to move down, he can uh, get lashered. Or if he chooses to move over and push, or not push, but uh, hit the wall with his um, melee attack, it will probably not kill it. Um, that would be enough time for Shark to recover, I would think. If he has another regrowth or a heal spell or something that can keep him from taking a ton of damage here. Uh, or keep him from dying to a ton of damage here. Um, all things considered, though, it would have been nicer if Shark had been able to stay away from the walls. Because those pushes and bashes have done a serious amount of damage to him. No armor for most of the game... Just one brace yourself. I gotta disagree with that choice. Yes, there was a rust on, but the rust only takes care of two armor. I mean, if you had a rhino hide plus a chitin armor or something like that, then a lot of that damage would not be on him right now. But yeah, I think he's got a break line of sight. And the best way a nature mage can do that is with walls. And then drink up. Break line of sight, drink up. Try and get some damage on the siren with the falcons and the fox. And then um, see if he can heal. Barring that, if he doesn't have any walls, he needs the surging wave of the siren and then hope that the daze works. Um, surging wave and then get away. Maybe, um... Surging wave and then move to the middle. 
where the thorn lasher is so that he can't get wall bashed again although yeah i don't know siren might have a boulder in there might have a fireball that would be hilarious have a fireball in there it's kind of counter synergy with your surging wave plan but Boulder, Force Hammer, something range 2. Sharkbait really thinking about this one. That layer can pop out another Falcon for free. Probably what he's going to do here. He needs more consistent dice out, and he can get those for free. Um, but he, got, he really he needs to wall himself off or heal himself this turn. A heal spell right now would be great. Just heal 8 damage and then drink for another 3. That would put him back down to 17 out of 34. That would be far less dangerous. Far less dangerous. Um, but he still needs to get some armor on. It is Enti's initiative next turn, so... You can expect something huge in the quick cast if you stay close enough. Which is why I think that breaking line of sight is the best option here. Still thinking this is life and death here for Shark. He has at six health remaining. That is very close to death by any way you slice it. An unbuffed mage could do that much damage to you theoretically. Much less one that has mana to work with. Here comes the Falcon. And it looks like he has chosen to go the Surging Wave route. He does get the slam and he gets the push. No damage though. He's going to do a wall bash. Six damage wall bash. Two of that is absorbed by armor. That puts Enti up to 14. If Shark can survive whatever it is that Enti is doing, he may just have a shot here. The slam is going to keep him from being immediately hit. I still think it would be a good plan to break line of sight. So maybe he has one wall of thorns and is going to move down and over and put the wall there. That would be a decent spot for it. Obviously it would be better to um, wall himself in with the spring. Not sure what Enti is crying about. He has enough mana to do just about anything. And if he holds on to his mana, he could tsunami next turn, even if Shark is across the field. So will we see a Tangle Vine go down. Interesting. He's still within range though, and he has not broken line of sight. Um now he, he's gone to the middle, so he won't get wall bashed. And a surging wave uh, at this stage in the game would have to roll max damage to kill him. So that's not too bad. 
The issue is he's going to get hit twice. Ooh, blanks it out with the falcon. Would have been nice to get a little bit of damage there. Uh, he's going to go for it. Shark only has six damage left. He's going to Siren's Call with his action. Okay, so that keeps the fox from damaging him. An excellent choice. And that gets rid of his daze and his slam. Oh, and there's a boulder coming. This is going to hurt. This is going to hurt a lot. And he gets exactly the amount of damage he needs. That will be the end of the game. And I just want to point out there that that was some excellent use of Siren's Call to keep his Siren alive, to keep him from taking less damage. He did end the game at half health, pretty much. So that's, that's really a dangerous game he played there. He played it pretty well. Um, I think... It might have been better spent to um, play uh, Ghoul Rot instead of Drown. I think that would have hurt a lot more for Shark. It looks like Enti did not have another Teleport. So if Shark had managed to get away from this... Um, Then he would have taken. Uh, he would have been stuck there, because the siren's going to have a hard time punching out of that tangle vine without taking a ton of damage. I would give Shark a chance to do some recovery, get some armor on, maybe another regrowth if he had another one. It would have been different, but the boulder was a good choice. The boulder ended the game and was likely to end the game um, and wouldn't have pushed Shark out of range. So he would have been able to attack again during the upkeep or during the first quick cast of the next turn. So good game to Anti and Sharkbait and thanks for watching the ADMW2. We will finish up the group stage here pretty soon and get on to elimination rounds. Bye.